I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice. We have good um, so we have a scary okay. I feel like this is quiet. Those of you online, can you hear me? How about now? Yeah, that's better. Okay. All right, we have a 17 point agenda. Can I have a motion for approval? All right, and second by Mr. Gottschall. We also need a motion to approve previous meeting minutes. Did anyone notice any corrections or anything? Okay. Thank you, Supervisor Renish. Do I have a second? Oh, and I didn't say vote for the agenda. So going back to the previous one, let's vote on the agenda. All those in favor of approving the agenda, please say aye. Any opposed? Okay, and then approving of the previous minutes. All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 I thought we had a second, Mr. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, any opposed? Okay, sorry, I think we're back on track here. Number six, public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would wish to speak? All right, if not, um, let's move on to number seven. Hello, Ms. Knack. Good timing. We're going to the VSO budget summary. Sorry, I got caught up in a phone call. It's too long that I thought it was going to. So the only bills that we had are um, up on the screen, the debt-com. Um, we did manage to purchase burial flags um, that we're going to need for next spring and take it out of this year's budget. Um, that will be reflected in um, by next month. Okay, any questions for Ms. Nuck? If not, do you have any admin report today? Um, everything's been going really well in the office. Um, we have, as of yesterday at four o'clock, we completed stage four of our office review of all the files. We've officially made it through Richland Center Cemetery and got through every single veteran because just that cemetery alone had a thousand veterans. So that was um, that was a very big deal. So now that we've completed them, um, the next is to we're going to be scanning documents from our files into the state database and uploading all the documents, death certificates, um, birth certificates, if we have them, if they're applicable, and DD-214s into the state database. So we'll be starting that um, on Monday. And then I'm going to be taking a week's vacation, October 23rd, just so you know that the office will be closed for a couple of those days. And the... Um, no, besides making our big purchase for burial flags, that was a big deal. I was very happy that we got to do that. We've never been able to purchase in one big boat before. So um, so besides that, I, I don't have anything else. Thank you. Any questions? All right, that takes us to our consent items, numbers 9, 10, and 11. Um, did anyone have any questions or staff that wanted to make any comments? I didn't know if it was just my um, computer or iPad, but number nine, my documents kind of seem cut uh, off. Uh, was that just the formatting? Yeah. I mean, not that I really had any questions on it. But. Um, right, it looks like it was like over. Um, not sure why it scanned like that, but if you scroll through the, you've got account numbers, what that was for and the amount. So that's the most important part. <laughs> um, I went through all of these yesterday with the administrators, so they're approved for payment. Anybody any questions about any of them? I did have a question on the child 
placements, this is just out of curiosity. So on the second page of the one that has the placements with mm -hmm. the color blocks. Yes. So I know that the individual blocks are individual patients, but like in July and August, even though the number of individuals didn't change, it looked like there's more. I don't know if I'm just not. I was just curious about that. It's down on the children's one. On the children's one. The child foster care. Mm -hmm. I know. I think this has been explained to me before, and I'm just forgetful. So, yes, each color is an individual child. It doesn't look like more, but it could be that there were still some in, but then others went out. You know what I mean? I know we had one that's no longer in foster care mid July ish. So it could be that that one came out, but another one got added or something. I'd have to look at the actual details of the. And if Jessica was here, she probably could explain it better. Um, the only other thing on the placement report to highlight. Um, not that it, I, if somebody noticed it, if you go up to um, fund 54 adults um, in August, um, it shows $143,000 in revenue. Um, we had. Uh, we had a. Somebody in a placement a few years ago that owed. Um, a couple hundred thousand dollars and they paid half of it. So, so we got about a hundred and it was like 119,000. So that's why that's such a strange amount. So <laughs> that's not normal. Don't expect that every month. I know we're not going to complain, but in case you caught that, so. And it's nothing really out of the ordinary with the budget. We're under budget. But. Any other questions? Okay, that takes us to our big long list of approving HHS contracts, agreements, and amendments. Looks like we have a few for 2023, and then the rest will be for 2024. Okay, so we have no amending and new contracts for 2023. Okay. But you will find 12B through F, we have our new contracts, MOUs, and um, agreements for 2024. Most of them are repetitive contracts from 2023. I did note if they were new contracts for 2024. On 12B, I noticed like overall our revenue went down just a hair. And I assumed, is that mostly from the ARPA? It looked like it was mostly from the fact that there won't be ARPA funding this coming year. Um, Some is ARPA, but as you'll see at the bottom, the Richland School District, um, they're not um, contracting with, or contra they are, are not contracting with us anymore to provide counseling services in the schools. So. Right there's that's sixty thousand dollars in revenue we're not getting. So, do you know? Sorry, this is an aside, but are they going to provide that service? That they Trish can answer that better. In that they're maybe providing it with the podcast. So. Oh, okay. Will we need to approve each of these individually, or is it just review? That's what I meant, like each document. Okay. All right. So, 12B. Okay. So, before we approve that, does anybody have questions? We're looking at 12B, which is the 2024 revenue contracts, has the totals of our revenue from last year and then now this year at the bottom. And if we don't have any questions, then we'll need to take a motion to approve those contracts. Thank you. Supervisor Gotchel, second by Supervisor Renish. Any further discussion? Are you struggling to find it, Mr. Kerr? I am struggling to get into my internet. Okay. Well, I'm going to get it into my internet. Thank you. 
Twenty twenty four than last year for the other funds. Yes. And it's decreased, correct? Or is it still similar amounts? Um they've been we've gotten a lump sum and as we use them, they do decrease. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. All right. Are we ready to approve? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so that takes us then to 12C. Which is the 2024 HHS contracts that are greater than 50,000. Any comments on those? I noticed we had a few that went up, I assume just because we're going to be utilizing them more. Or the trend for 2023 was that it did go up. So we want to make sure that we have the right amount in there. For 2024. So to clarify, the 2023 contract, is that then just our initial contract or does that include the amended amounts? That includes the amended amounts. Includes the amount. okay. I have a question. Um, thank you for putting on there what is not county levy and what is partially. But could we, on the partialies, put the percentage, you know, in the future? So that if I know it's 50% funded by the state or 10% or 80 or. Sure. But we can try and figure it out. <laughs> Give or give or take a couple of percentages. Well, no, I, just something close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm glad to see it just having the word partially there, but then that just strikes more curiosity in me. So you you start out good, and we'll just keep going. Okay. Any questions from board members? All right, then I'll take a motion to approve the contracts greater than $50,000. Okay, Mr. Severson? Yep. Yes, Don. Okay, we'll try to speak closer. Is that better? <laughs> I struggle with this all the time because I feel like I'm about to touch it. So I apologize. I'll I'll try to speak closer. Um, how about those of you online? Can anyone verify? Have you been able to hear? <laughs> I I can hear Ingrid. This is Brandy. Okay, thank you, Brandy. Thank you. Okay, um, where were we? We had a first by Carrie Severson. Are you making a second or a question? Sorry. Second. All right. <laughs> Any further questions? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Okay, 12D, uh, 2024 HHS contracts less than $50,000. Any questions? All right. Anybody willing to make a motion? Thank you, Supervisor Renish. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Chicker. Any further questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Okay, 12E, 2024 agreements less than $10,000.
This can take a minute to review, but whenever you're ready, we'll take a motion. It's a pretty short one. This one's just a one page. Thank you, Mr. Gatchell. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Okay, and 12F, 2024 MOUs. Looks like the first one was just informational that we're not using it. Okay. All right, so we just have Simon's then. Do I have a motion for approval? Thank you, Francis. And a second. Ms. Chicker, all those in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Okay. Approve the application and acceptance of the 2024-85-21 Specialized Transportation Grant. And Roxanne's here. Good morning. Good morning. Gonna make her yes. I'm not sure why. I think I'm in the hot seat all of a sudden. Um, so this is our normal um, grant um, that we apply for every year. So this is through the state of Wisconsin. Um, so the ADRC is the one that provides our public transportation. And so this is um, every year we apply for this. We're pretty much guaranteed to get it. Um, the amount of the grant is $79,889. And there is a required county match of 20%. So this has gone through our transportation committee yesterday, public hearing and so forth, and they've approved it for here, and then it needs to go to county board for approval. Do I have a second? Yes, I heard Carrie Severson. Um, is this the same amount that it is every year? Or does it, has it changed at all? It has not changed in years. No, it's the same amount. And because of the size of our county, it's the least amount the DOT actually gives out. So we do get the least amount in the state, but the other counties of comparable size. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. They've gone up, but actually because of the programming that we have, we do a lot of trips for our managed care organizations. And so we get reimbursed the full cost of the trip and a little bit above. So we usually generally end up with somewhat of a surplus in that program. That surplus then has to go into our fund 18, which is our trust fund. And that trust fund, as we build that, that helps us purchase new vehicles, make repairs on our current vehicles. So it helps keep that program sustainable. You're welcome. Thanks for asking. Okay, I think we have a motion in a second. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hear you. They can't hear me anyway. I'm muted. I can hear you actually. I'm glad oh, you voted on. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Good morning, <laughs> right Sherry. Along. Well, glad, glad, glad you can hear me. <laughs> All right, number 14, um, approve the 2023 public health fee schedule. And I'll assume Ms. Anderson will be presenting, although it says Rosetta. <laughs> so this is the um, county fee schedule or the fee schedule for all of health and human oh. services. Yep, that's all right. So this is for all of health and human services. We put everything on one document. Um, it's my understanding that the county does want to be able to have one place that individuals can go to have all the fees listed and know what all the fees are. So we created one document to have everything there. Um, just a couple of things that I wanted to highlight. The suggested donation for a meal has gone up for this for next year is what we're proposing. Um, we've added a couple of um, fees. One is for a copy of the TB results. What we have found is that people are getting their TB tests, they're getting their results, and they're coming back in the next couple of months to get a copy of that. And so that is taking up some staff time, and we are adding a charge of $10 there for that. Um, and then we added a step-parent adoption fee. So that is something that on occasion, not very often, we maybe do a couple a year. Um, but if we've been doing it for free, where if they go with a private agency, they are be in charge for that service. So we added that fee onto the fee schedule. How much did the meal donation price go up? I think 50 cents. So I was actually looking, I had been reviewing it. So my chart pulled up the 2023 public health fee schedule. That's what I had been looking at. 
So I was curious, did the cost for flu vaccine go up a little bit to it look like? It did, yeah. Okay. So we did increase that. Last year it was um, 40 for the regular dose and 65 for the high dose. And this year we do have that as 45 and 60. And the 65 stayed the same, but the regular dose did go up $5. Um, I saw, oh, I think it was in your director report. So this may not be the right place, but I saw that you were mentioning that we can give COVID vaccines to those who are eligible for it. Is there a fee for those vaccines? I believe there's not, and correct me if I'm wrong, Brandy, but for children, there definitely isn't because we have the vaccines for children. And I believe if the other ones, there wouldn't be, but let me know, Brandy, if I'm wrong. Yes, um, there, um, the COVID vaccine that we will be providing, we will be of no cost to the to the uh, people that can receive that. We can only provide the COVID vaccines now due to the uh, program rule changes to underinsured and underinsured, underinsured and uninsured persons. So that is now different. And did you guys just find out about that? I'm just curious because um, we were just talking at the free clinic about like where people could get COVID vaccines. So I guess I'm wondering when that will start. So, yes, Ingrid, um, you know, with, with a lot of the changes in my public health unit and, and things, you know, onboarding new staff and such, um, that was recent news to me as well. Um, I do think they had been, they had been talking about a lot of these changes that were forthcoming um, for a few months and it had been anticipated, um, but I, I wasn't familiar with, um, with how exactly that was going to roll out, to be quite honest. I do also understand there's what's called a bridge access program where we could, until I believe the end of 2024, provide COVID shots to uninsured and underinsured adults. However, I, I've been told that I have to um, ask people that do have insurance or have coverage to seek those out at the clinics or pharmacies. Are, do you already have the vaccines available? Like, can we start referring people to you if they fall under that category? I have the vaccine available, but I don't have my protocols updated yet. I only have okay. part of the vaccine available rather. Sorry, I misspoke. I, I have new staff here and I need them to also be familiar with the training and all of the rules surrounding the COVID shots. It's a much, um, we need to be more careful with that vaccine. I'll leave it at that. Okay, thank you for the info. Uh, Mr. Steve. Madam Chair, thank you for raising your voice to an audible level. Um, I have a question about the vaccines. You mentioned that the vaccines are available for underinsured, uninsured and underinsured folks. Uh, at, is that at no cost? Yes, yeah. those would be at no cost. And secondly, uh, is the vaccine available to others for a fee? The COVID vaccine is not available to others for a fee at our office. Um, we will be encouraging people to connect with their primary care physician to get the COVID vaccine through their doctor. I understand that there are some pharmacies yes. that are providing it. Yes, you can go to a pharmacy and ask for it. Do you know which pharmacies are providing it? I believe the prescription center in the hospital is. Um, I'm not sure about Walmart. I would assume any Walgreens. I believe Center Pharmacy and Basketball Pharmacy might be offering that. And is that being offered at no cost? No, but it will be less, I believe, than if you go to the clinic. And do you have a, a ballpark figure on what it's going to cost people? I don't. Sorry. Probably, I, I don't know. I'm not even going to guess. My wife and I had our shots two weeks ago. We got them at the hospital and with Social Security and the other insurance is free. So if you've got social security and then supplementary, uh, it's no problem. We schedule that and the flu vaccine at the same time. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that comment. Uh, I'm not asking for myself. I, I'm eligible for vaccines that at no cost to the VA, but I am asking for others and uh, it is uh, for some people a disincentive that they don't have the funds to pay. So, uh, 
Thank you uh, for your report. All right, thank you. Um, we need to make move approve this, correct? And I don't think we have a motion yet. So, do I have a motion to approve this fee schedule? Mr. Severson and a second, Mr. Van Landwitt. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Okay, number 15, our director's report. So I did have in your packet the unit updates, but I just wanted to highlight a couple of things. Um, in our children and youth services, we do have two open positions. So we're advertising for those right now. With our economic support, um, just really wanna stress that it is a pretty stressful time for them. They're very busy with the increased number of calls. They're very busy with protocols that were in place prior to COVID and the majority of our staff were hired after COVID happened. Um, and so they're relearning a lot of new policies, procedures. Um, and it's just been a pretty stressful time. So we're tr really trying to be mindful of the high number of calls that they're receiving. We wanna make sure they're not getting burnt out. Um, and so that's just really wanted to just bring that to your attention. Um, in our behavioral health unit, we are exploring new therapy group options for the community starting in next year. And then in public health, we have hired um, two public health specialists. So Brandy has a staff of three now, which we're very excited about. She went from a unit of one to a unit of three. Um, they both started on Monday and so far things have been going well. Um, and then the last thing is, I just wanted to really talk about the budget process that we went through for this year. Um, it went very smooth. Um, we were able to get things prepared and then Stephanie and I sat down and had a meeting with John and Candace and Derek and really got to take a deep dive into our budget. And so we do appreciate the process that we went through this year and felt that it was a smooth process. Great, thank you. Any questions from anyone or comments? Okay, um, future agenda items. Is there anybody who would like to see something on next agenda? All right, I don't know if we beat our own record or not. 9.58, we'll adjourn to November 9th, thank you, at 9.30. Can I have a motion for adjournment? Supervisor Renish, Mr. Gottschall, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank aye. you all. Thank you to the staff for your presentation and being here.